fine. But um, once you have all the shapes traced, the next thing you have to do is number them. We're gonna create a paint by number kind of situation where you just have to fill in the color that you choose for that number value and then the whole thing will just be a paint by number. Um, trust me when I say this is gonna this is gonna make your life so much easier. And basically, after you number all the shapes, you just have to work at filling them in and making it look nice. So let's see what this looks like, right? Let's lift this up, take this piece of graphite paper and put it someplace safe. You could probably use it again. You can see where all your tracing lines are, but um, I'm pretty sure you could use that again to trace something else in the future if you want to. Look at what that looks like. It's so cool. It's like all these little outlines. It probably doesn't look like you. You can kind of sort of see my daughter Sophie in here, but um, it's, it's not perfect, right? So the next thing you need is a very sharp pencil. And you watch, my pencil probably won't be sharp. That's okay. So my pencil is not very sharp. Um, I really should probably go and sharpen this, but I'm not gonna because I, I've already started this video, so we're just gonna keep going. Um, if you can get a super, super sharp point on your pencil, that's gonna be the best scenario. Um, obviously, you can see there are some places on mine that I didn't press very hard. You can't very well see some of these shapes, but that's okay because it's all graphite. It's all just pencil lead. So you can go in there and you can very carefully redraw, if you can see it, um, but you can, if you get close enough, you can see your shapes and you can always double check too. You can go like this and double check what the, what the shapes actually look like so that you can get them perfect. And, um, I would lightly just kind of make sure you know where those shapes are. You guys, when I say lightly, I am not kidding because you are going to notice that there's some smearing that happens when you start coloring on top of this graphite. Sometimes that graphite smears into your oil pastels and you do not want it to be dark. Now you can clearly see that some of my lines are pretty dark. Um, I'm probably going to have to do a lot of erasing once I start coloring because you don't want that stuff to kind of get in to um, your work, right? You don't want it to be smudged. And if you have anything like this, I don't know if you can tell right there, there's a nice giant smudge from probably from where I was resting my hand, um, take some time and get rid of those smudges without ruining the tracing lines that you've made. Um, yeah, you, you really need to get rid of those. Um, blow on it. Don't, don't brush it with your hand because, um, you're going to smear something now right there. I could brush it cause there's no other lines there, but, um, I wouldn't brush it with your hand. Um, along the edge, you can see I did a pretty good job of making these lines go off the edge. You're probably going to notice with yours that a lot of those don't. If you weren't doing that as you go, um, you may need to fix that. You want all these lines to go off the edge, okay? Any line that goes towards the side of the paper needs to go off the edge of your paper. So do that so you don't get that funky looking weird border, okay? Um, some of these at the top you might have... Um, I think, I think my paper when I was tracing slipped down. And so I think even though I was tracing lines here, the paper, um, was not there. So if your graphite paper is not underneath where you're tracing, you know, nothing's going to happen. So that's pretty much it. You can always fix those as you number two. Okay. So there's pretty much, um, my face. There's a couple of shapes in here. I probably am going to have to be a little more careful about now. We have to decide um, what number everything is. Now, one thing you could do is you could leave your um, graphite paper in here when you do the numbers. It's not gonna work for the tiny ones, okay? But for the big ones, it might work to just leave that there because then you can write the number on your face and you can, and it'll come through to the other side and you'll have that number there. Um, <clears throat> or you can number it by hand. I, I think this is probably easier to leave that in there. Um, find the place on your picture, some place in your picture, there's going to be this, this transition from white to black. Now on Sophie's face, it's a little hard to find it, but I think right here is the place. Do you see how there's like 
the white is there and it goes to black there. So so you can see the transition, da, 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 da. It's like little steps, okay? Sometimes it happens, if you had a nice contrast on your face, sometimes it happens right across your face. You'll see all the way from black to white on one, one area. For me, it's right here. I, I can tell because I can see all, it looks like a value. It basically looks like a little value scale, right? If I zoom into that, I'll show you um, kind of what I mean. So find that spot on your um, picture so that you can figure out how many values you have. Most of you have eight. If you don't have eight, just keep double checking, double checking, double checking until you know for sure. But most of you have eight. And you can see, I know this one for sure is black. Okay, and then I know this one is just slightly lighter than the black. So, so I know it goes this way, this way, this way, to the next step, to the next step, to the next step, and then to this step right here. And then I think that one is white. I think I think these two are the same as these two. So, so right there is my um, value scale. Let's see how many I have. Um, and I'm gonna write these numbers fairly hard. Like I'm gonna push hard with my pencil when I do this. One, I know that's a one, that's the white, okay? When you do when you do your value scale, um, one is always white, and then um, the highest number that you get to is gonna be your black. So one is my white. This is my two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven, and that is eight. I do have eight values, okay? Most of you will have eight values. If you don't get all the way to eight, just double check and, and make sure that you don't have any, that you're missing in there. So I have eight values. Now that I have this little scale, I can use this area as my judge. Like that's the, that's the thing I'm gonna use to see what, what the other values are. So this one, right here looks like it matches that. So that's probably a two. I'm switching to my pen now because it's a little easier. Um, that's probably a two. That's probably a one. I can tell because it's white. Um, this one, sometimes you have to follow it through. Like it could be a four or it could be a three. Does it match the four or does it match the three? I feel like this change from here to here looks the same as that change from there to there, so that's probably a three. Be careful about resting your hand on your paper too because this little, you know, this little pressure also could cause more smudges. So this, I, I, I drew a line there because I thought that was a different value from this one, but um, I, I, it's kind of weird, right? Like. Do I want it to be a three or do I want it to be a two? I think I'm just gonna keep it a two. Um, the, uh, there might have been some kind of mistake on my tracing right there, it's fine. This one's a two. Notice how tiny sometimes your writing has to get. And sometimes like if I have a long shape, like this shape goes all the way up to here, I might write the number one again just to remind myself that that's a one. Now this one, um, I don't know, what, what value do we think that is? That's probably, a five, right? Because it seems like it's darker than that. Um, and so it's probably that. It's probably a five. So I gotta turn this, sorry. Hopefully I'm still in the camera. So I'm gonna write the tiniest five I can. Now this is where if you get tiny, tiny shapes, you can't fit a little number inside there. What you can do is you can take a sharp pencil, if you have a sharp pencil, and you can actually write it inside there. Okay, like that. Um, and, and, and the little tiny shapes that are up here in their eyes, um, you know, like some of these little tiny, tiny shapes in here, you may have to look, decide what it is. You could even write it out here if you want to, but then go in here and like just with your tip of your pencil, write the number in there. Um, the thing that I want you guys to do is I want you to have a number in every single shape. Literally every single shape needs to have a number in it so that when you start filling these in, all you gotta do is pick the right color, okay? Now, there is a little trick for 
having the right colors. And then there's also a little trick for filling them in. We're gonna have to do a lot of erasing. So, so try not to make these numbers too dark. Definitely don't write them in pen on your, on your final copy paper. We don't wanna see the, these numbers. We don't wanna see them at all later on when we're done. Um, so you gotta write them dark enough to see them, but light enough that you can erase them, okay? And you are actually, for my students anyways, you're gonna turn this in to me, a picture of this, um, and that'll be today, okay? All right, good luck. Oh, let me tell you too, um, I, I did give you, I did share this little value scale thing with you. Let me just zoom out so you can see it. Um, and in our classroom, so if you have eight values, you can use this value scale or if you have seven or six, if that helps you to like slide it around your paper, you could print out your value scale and use that instead of just eyeballing it from a distance. Okay, 